Hello friends, my name is Christopher. Today is the 3rd of August, 2020, and this is What's Growing in Wisconsin. Of course, as always, this is not a comprehensive list because I don't grow everything there is to grow, but I still do grow a lot, so let's start in the orchard. Well, sadly, all there really is to say is my entire peach crop over the weekend was destroyed by squirrels, birds, who knows what. They were just starting to get ripe. There were probably at least 100 left, and now they're all gone. And I feel stupid, obviously, and disappointed. Um, I was thinking of asking for some sprays and things for my birthday last month, but I just didn't do the research to see what I needed. I'm so hesitant about getting certain chemicals to spray on fruits, but I think I need to set that aside. I need to know what to spray on my trees, not only for insect protection, but also to deter pests. So if you take care of fruit trees, I'd really like to know what you use. Please let me know in the comments. I have peach, pear, apple, and cherry trees. This is the time of year that I've anxiously been awaiting for. Everything in the garden is huge. You can see with just me out here, I'm six foot five. Corns shooting over eight feet. All of the things growing in the trellis are just out of this world. Um, my big goal this year was a lot of verticality and um, planting things closer in proximity. And as you can see, the verticality has paid off in spades. Through the garden gate right away, you can see all of the morning glories. They're beautiful. I planted them everywhere. I threw all sorts of little seeds. So they're climbing up amidst the beans and the squash. They're climbing on the corn. They're climbing by the peppers all over the place. Really quite beautiful. Uh, I love having the extra color and the pollinators enjoy having an extra food source. This is my preferred method for growing beans. These are just green pole beans up here. Um, it's a perfect height for me to walk under. They just go with gravity, so real easy to harvest. Um, green beans we can be harvesting now through the first frost, and we will have an abundance of them. It looks pretty much the same in the opposite direction right here, except these beans, you can kind of tell, are a lot wider than the pole beans. These are a sort of different potted beans. Um, they'll have different colors. I'll store them dry, soak them, and then use them for soups over winter. My planting schedule and map was smart this year. You can see this brown here. These are the snap peas. They're nice and done. And as they are finishing out, all the beans and the squash are kind of filling in the space. In fact, this is the only place where it kind of is a little too thin. Everything else is a nice solid wall of color. I did um, try to save some of these pea seeds and plant them in a different location, but it looks like over the weekend a rabbit got to them. So I might have to see it again or just ignore it, but there's still enough time to get another crop of snap peas in our area before the frost, if I decide to do that. As we see here with the bumblebee, the second wave of raspberries are being pollinated right now. There's another bumblebee. Bumblebees are my main pollinators of raspberries, for me at least, fun fact. Um, you won't be able to tell from the camera, but by us, if you stand here and you just stay quiet you can't not hear them they're really everywhere and i've learned so much about bumblebees and their gentle nature um, they're like dogs of the garden they're really very sweet anyways these are all of the the new growth and this will be the bigger harvest um, in another three weeks time we'll probably be you'll probably see some red on here uh, again in september when we come to you next even though much of it will have been harvested. The black jewel raspberries are all done. We only get one harvest out of them. And it was quite a lot. So I just turned the camera around from where it was. I wanted to show you all the growth on the gooseberry. This got ravaged by a raccoon or whatever just a few weeks before the season started, so I didn't get any berries out of it. But the berries grow on new growth. So perhaps in the long run, the raccoons did me a favor, even though I didn't harvest anything this year. Pretty much everything from like here on out is going to bear fruit next year. And I'm a little overwhelmed at the thought of that, even though it's terrific and I use them for jams because they're so high in pectin. Just neat to see. Um, also in frame, you might be able to see the nice growth on the currants. They're both about this full, which is lovely. I think next year we're actually going to get a harvest. They'll be three years old then, and that makes sense. We'll get over here in a second, but this is a nice shot of my sun sculpture. I've got Morning glories climbing up that. 
and it's so neat to see. All right, Barrelville. I'll try to get everything in frame and talk about it. I've learned a lot this year. It, there's probably a better term for it, but I'm experiencing a lot of, this is an evolutionary term, insular dwarfism, where the plants that I'm planting in these small segregated pots, these barrels here are experiencing dwarfism. They're growing shorter, smaller fruits, that kind of stuff for the most part. And I'm learning that not everybody likes to be planted in a barrel, but some do. For example, herbs, they're great. I'm drying out some cilantro for seed, some dill, I can pick that up. This has actually been a really good year for, um, for herbs for me. I've been using them a lot and the dry stuff I'll be storing. I'll do this again in the same pot next year, except I'm going to find more of a shaded area for the herbs because I think they like it better. So this will probably be up in the corner by the raspberries so it gets less direct sunlight throughout the day. Right here, these are the Jerusalem artichokes. By this time of year, they're supposed to be about twice as tall and have beautiful yellow flowers. Again, I don't think the root system likes these barrels and I'm a little concerned because I think they're going to be permanently in barrels because they spread so much. I don't intend to put them in a raised bed. I'll have to think about that. I could add another six inches of soil to the top of the barrel. I just don't know. They also are heavy drinkers. Um, if we don't get enough water, enough rain, they shrivel. And I know that's affected their growth this year. So it's, it's a learning experience. Right in front of me there, that's supposed to be a giant zucchini. It just straight up died. You know, this is the second year I've done zucchini in barrels and it's been uh, lackluster twice. I even got all the squash bugs out of it. So I don't think it was squash bug killing it. It just doesn't like my barrels. That's fine. Squash grows really nicely in there. Or sorry, not squash. Spinach. I should probably reseed with spinach, but note to self, the mint is doing just fine. You can't kill mint. My um, apple tr or my pear tree that I'm trying to save seems to be doing just fine. The ground cherries right in the front here, again, I think I had a squirrel climbing on them. They grow fine in barrels and actually I've been harvesting regularly from it. Um, I'll probably do them in barrels again next year. The linseed, also known as flax, is again half as tall as it should be. I, I don't know if it's a moisture thing or if it's it's a root depth thing. I think I'm going to try them in a section of raised beds so their roots can just go crazy. Either way I'll save all the seeds from this next year which is fine. I'll make some boiled linseed oil and then save some for harvesting next year. But if I'm going to grow flax for the linen um, the stalks need to be a lot taller than this. I can show you peppers in just a second. We'll get a better view of that, but hey, here's another good shot of the sculpture climbing with morning glories. <sighs> okay, peppers like the barrels. Something about the shade and the moisture works really well for them. These beautiful purple things here, uh, I got from my buddy Jim from Kansas, Midwest Gardener, and they're growing nicely all around and throughout, as you can see. I also have some, uh, I think, habaneros and some other let's say more spicy peppers in here and in here and they're they're coming along just fine I'm pleased I will do I will do peppers in barrels next year I'll do peppers I'll do spinach um, I'll do ground cherries but I won't do zucchini and uh, yeah we'll see what else so a good a good learning experience let's turn around and look at the raised beds so right now you're directly above uh, the barrels that we just looked at. These are the two new beds that I built last fall and are using for the first time. Uh, doing really wonderfully. This is the second seeding here. This used to be spinach. Now it's radishes. I'll pick these this month. Um, the first wave of potatoes I picked last month, Red Norlands, got, I don't know, 15 pounds or something in a small space. I've reseeded this with another marigold that I started. Two zucchini plants that'll be nice and big. I did better last year with my second zucchini plant that I planted in the summer and I harvested in the fall. So I've got two of them that'll bleed into this space when I pick up the carrots. I also did a row of zinnias and we'll see what happens. They're coming up and I planted peas here with this trellis. Again, I think they got eaten. Uh, carrots are ready to be harvested pretty much any time. I'll pull one and show you how nice. So. I think this is a slender one purposefully of the genus, but they're ready to go. I got my thinnings out. 
it's nice. Whenever we need carrots in a recipe, I just come out and I, I grab them. They're pretty much in their prime now, which means I don't want to leave them in here for longer than another three weeks. Otherwise, they'll start to get woody. I'll use this one in a recipe for minestrone soup today, along with a couple other ones. And these potatoes right here, I think we'll be harvesting in September. They have a longer growth period and I planted them later. Uh, these are, I don't know, some gold potato. August is my favorite month in the garden. I think you can tell why, just because of how huge everything is. The second year asparagus has been amazing. Um, so much growth, so much energy being put down to the roots. We're constantly getting new asparagus shoots shot up. Next year we'll be harvesting it like a mature plant because it's definitely a mature plant. Um, my second wave of strawberries underneath here has been coming up, so not enough to make, you know, a big bushel, but enough to put on some yogurt in the morning. Many of the tomato plants are taller than I am. These are, I think, eight feet stalks, and these are six feet stalks. All but, all but one of them is right to the top, which is pretty cool. Many of them are reddening. Right now, this is, um, this is a red, large cherry that I planted. These are coming into ripeness. And then over here, where I just picked, I think these are my Moonglow tomatoes. Whoops! Sometimes accidents happen when you're starting seeds indoors and you mislabel things or you get the wrong seed in. That was supposed to be a tomatillo. And as you can clearly see, it is not a tomatillo. You get the picture. They're a lovely color and they're quite delicious. So I've got a good um, bean and tomato recipe. We're having that for supper with some fresh bread tomorrow. I really like these and they're fun to give away as gifts because they're such an interesting striation. Um, and if you don't grow heirlooms, you're never exposed to this kind of stuff. So tomatoes are fun. They make me feel cool. I'm going to be doing a lot of canning because this is twice as many tomatoes as I've ever grown. Canning whole tomatoes, canning salsa, and making sauces. So if you got a favorite recipe, <laughs> leave it in the comments. Thanks. Mmm. Beautiful. So, here I am, and here we are. This is spaghetti squash. Doing as it does. This space is just kind of a weird space, so I like to have a crawling vining plant in it. It starts way at the end there, and as you can see, I've got one stalk going 10 feet at least already in this direction. One is climbing the fence here, the other is climbing the fence at you. And they put off these beautiful spaghetti squash. Last year, I think we had at least a dozen. We'll see what we get this year. Um, baked sp spaghetti squash keeps so nicely. Now I'm gonna move the camera to where I'm standing and look up. Ta-da, the sunflowers are opening up. Isn't that beautiful? This is just full of bumblebees going, just getting all the little flowers. And the taller one has yet to open. I got one here, I got one here, one or two down at the end. So in another, oh, I don't know, middle of the month, maybe even still at the beginning of September, we'll have four or five of these open up. They're really very beautiful. My um, video on harvesting mammoth sunflower seeds and storing them has been pretty popular from last year. We'll be doing essentially the same thing with that. And they are cheery to look at because right around the fence here, I've got some gorgeous white flowers in a bush. And ah, oh, it's amazing to look at from the inside of the house. Also amazing to look at down this aisle, there's plenty to see. Behind me was all the garlic. I picked that in the middle of July. It is uh, outside hanging and curing right now. Zinnias that I co-planted among the tomatoes are are wonderful. They've definitely increased our pollination locally in this area and I will I think always plant zinnias. These are the giant ones, these are some standard variety just for again some levels and they're great cut flowers too, they last such a long time. The two brassicas that I have here were a waste of space to be honest. That's that's a cauliflower and I even wrapped it and it just did not work. Lessons learned um, with brassicas this year. I planted them too close, so I, I stretched my luck. And also, they don't like to be shaded. I, I thought they were going to get enough light. They definitely didn't in my situation. And a cauliflower in particular, well, all of them, they stretch to get that light. So I need to plant them in a 
full sun area next year. Really, these are just here as filler. They're not doing anything. I, I could take them out or chop and drop to, you know, add some nutrients into the soil. Other than that, the bean tower behind me is climbing. I haven't seen any beans in it, which is odd. I don't remember the varieties that I planted there. There's, it's flowering, so I know beans will come, and it's awfully top-heavy. So good thing I wedged the stakes deep into the ground. That was a new kind of last-minute thing. It worked. They're definitely climbing up it, and we'll see how it uh, stands for the rest of the year. But we'll make some modifications to its structural integrity in 2021. As I move one aisle over, you can see the beauty of the corn. Lots of stalks coming in. This is just a rainbow popcorn. So, I don't know. I keep saying that I should net this to make sure the squirrels don't get at it. They had gotten at it by this time already in years past. I don't know if it pays. We'll see. I'll probably be too lazy to do it. But the corn we save as, as popcorn and the stalks we save in, as a harvest time decoration. Some of the uh, the best brassicas, to tell you the truth, are the two big Brussels sprouts I have growing since they climb so much. And I've got one, two, three good heads of cabbage. I'm going to harvest one this week on Wednesday for some uh, cabbage and kielbasa skillet recipe. This is the other sunflower that I was talking about. This is a late bloomer, which is nice because it spreads out that beautiful sunflower askness in the garden. Yeah, this is just a cool shot to look at. The front beds are stunning in July. They're still nice this time of August. You can see the bee balm over there and the phlox really are near the end. I've got some red and some light fuchsia bee balm. Same with the phlox. Two different shades of purple. Great for the pollinators. And the airflow doesn't make the bee balm smell terrible. Sometimes bee balm has a really strong odor to it. Not this case. Up front a bit more towards our porch. You can see we've got some black-eyed Susans and some bellflowers and different kinds of phlox, bee balm and the such. Our goal is to have color all season. So we'll continue to fill in these empty spaces so it's nice and confluent. Might even bring it a little further forward. Who knows? Uh, but this is really a fun passion. You can see the flower pots are doing beautifully and the hanging pots. Once the geraniums decided, I'm done in the hanging pots, the petunias went kaboom! Beautiful reds. And that's my lime tree. It's a two-year-old tree. It's growing quite nicely. I'd say it's a nice two and a half feet. With this year's shed project behind us, I've already determined that next year's big project for me is going to be way more perennial flowers. I'm going to kind of go master gardener crazy. Here you can see we've got some black-eyed Susans and some cone flowers and this little section needs so much work. This is behind our house by our watering spigot and it's it's going to get essentially more of these but uh, if you've ever been in a situation where you want to start going perennial crazy let me know what you did. I'm uh, all for inspiration at this point. This is essentially the view that we can see from our dining room. Here's the beautiful hydrangea bush. That's the word I was trying to remember earlier. And you see how lovely it is next to the sunflowers that are opening up. You can even see the corn and the morning glories, depending on the time of the day. This is a field of lilies of all different colors. You can see the end of some of the, um, like the fiery color burgundy ones at the end. Well, those aren't burgundy. We had some real burgundy ones. We've got these gentle, supple purple flowers. The crocosmia is pretty much done behind me. But this is a lovely section, pretty much in the middle of July. Sorry you missed it. Moose. Hi, Moose. Hey, Moose. Come on, jump. Run, go, go. Ah well, Moose, Charlotte, and I bid you adieu. Thank you so much. Go get a stick. Go get a stick. Ready, Moose? Get it. Thank you so much for watching. Lots growing. We'll end with a nice shot of the shed. I put out 11 videos. Whoa, on that last month. If you're not into shed stuff, at least check out the time lapse. Eight weeks and four minutes is pretty entertaining. Mommy, oh, that I mommy, showed you the I'm end. I shot of the shed at the end of the last two videos. So here's just the final project. It's been a lot of fun. I love my garden. How are things going in yours? I asked you earlier, if you didn't catch the whole video, what you think I should do for spray for my fruit trees and what recipes you're using for everything that's growing in your garden. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you next month.
Bye.